Does it work? Warm welcome. So this is about the bright side of life. This is about art and play. So in the, this is not about business so much. So several of you might have had the chance to see the augmented reality with Google Classes in the Bavarian National Museum, which led to a new, totally new experience of art and museums. So we have two techies and one art person, a museum's manager. Mr. Welcome to Mr. Max Hollein, who is the head of three museums in Frankfurt, one of the most successful museums director in Germany. She, she is um, doing three museums, one contemporary or maybe exhibition hall, uh, antique sculptural museum, and a very well-known museum with 700 years of art, everything. So, and he is also a brilliant fundraiser. He is a brilliant curator. He's an art person and a manager. So he's study, he has studied art history and economics. And some of them, some, some of my colleagues, journalists, they called him the great Gatsby of Frankfurt. So I know he doesn't like it so much, but he's often dressed like a banker, smart like a nerd, and intellectual like an artist. And of course, this man has a digital strategy for his three museums, and we will hear about it later. Then hello to Mr. Dr. Thomas Alt, who is the CEO of Metayo. Metayo is a Munich-based augmented reality company who is developing software in that field from um, animated catalogs to cars like Volkswagen. And everybody, of course, has, or probably everybody, has seen uh, last year's IKEA catalog, where you can sit on your sofa without moving and furnish your home. And this is the guy who invented that. 211 million subscribers has the catalog, and so I hope so many users. And then I have to say hello to an artist or a game designer who is representing here the younger generation and the digital native generation. Hello, Sophia George. She's British, she's a game designer, and she's the ever first game designer in resident in the traditional Victoria and Albert Museum in London and designing a video game, a computer game there. And she was raised with computer games. She told me she started with four years. So we will hear about her project there and what she's doing. So first of all, I would like to give you an impression what you missed on Sunday, the museum's tour of Metayo and the Bavarian National Museum. Please clip on.
So, quite an experience. So, Mr. Hollein, is that the future of the museum? Well, I think it's one possibility to uh, obviously enhance the museum experience and give a proper context to what you're seeing in an institution like a museum. And uh, obviously, uh, with the objects that we have on display, a lot of the stories that are behind these ob objects cannot be told through the object itself. And I think that particular tool that you have developed uh, has the capacity not only of doing that, but is extremely uh, successful in laying out these stories in a multifaceted way. So I think it's an, it can be an important tool and one aspect. Um, on the other hand, I think that uh, a, a museum itself as an institution um, should not uh, fill itself up too much with, with a whole number of digital tools. I think that uh, you have two sides of the coin in that context. If you look at our visitorship uh, in museums, you can see that the average stay of the visitor has not changed for, for within the last uh, century. So in 1960, visitors came and stayed for an average uh, time of one hour and 10 minutes, and that's the same uh, right now. So different to what's happening in TV or in, uh, in, in newspaper re reading, the limited attention uh, that you have in other areas of information distribution, it's not happening within museums. You, you generally invest about an hour to go through our uh, galleries. And you can say, well, that's similar to theater or a movie, but the difference is obviously that in, in a museum, there's no one uh, kind of uh, giving you uh, the length of the duration of the stay. So there's an investment of the visitor, uh, and I think that they, they remain true in looking at, at the objects and uh, trying to get, find a connection to the objects and having a, a possibility of interacting, the visitors among themselves, about these. Um, so I think we want to enhance that. And on the other hand, I think all, a lot of the digital tools, and one of it uh, would be the, uh, what we have seen right now, but a lot of the other things will be used as an enormous educational platform besides what we are doing within the physical uh, museum. So I see the future of the museum twofold. One, the institution as we know it, with a lot of uh, enhancement, especially in the dialogue between the visitors, and have a, have a genuine experience in the space. And on the other hand, we develop, a, let's say, a platform of education uh, in di with digital means outside of the physical experience of the museum. And uh, there have been two mistakes that have been done in the last uh, decade about this, is that museums try to create, recreate a virtual experience of the museum visit. And I think that's a, a complete failure, uh, because you will never have the same experience even if you create it virtually. And then the other mistake is that a lot of the digital initiatives of museums right now are actually to lure the visitor in, into the institution to kind of create a physical visit. And I think both, that also should not be our goal. I think that uh, the, our digital initiatives should be to kind of enhance the education about art and culture to, to a broad uh, public. And that goes into digital publishing, that goes into uh, online education, that goes into educational gaming uh, uh, for children, that goes into a what we are also developing a very broad digital uh, media platform that kind of gives you a very different experience how you, uh, how you kind of navigate through our collection, through the objects, and how you can see it in a very different way, very different to what you would experience with the physical visit of the museum. By the way, we see the pictures in, in the, on the screen are pictures from the three museums Max Holland had it, from the Schoen, from the Städel, and the Liebighaus. So, may I summary? No virtual reality, no marketing tool, no games, no gimmicks, just art and education. Well, that would be putting it too conservative. I think what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that uh, I think there's a desire also now uh, to have a museum experience that is obviously a little bit different to uh, what you are encountering, let's say, on an online site. I mean, I think it's, if you, uh, 
it's a little bit similar to your shopping experience on Amazon is obviously different to your shopping experience if you go to Barney's in New York. Uh, so you, you have a different kind of uh, approach to that. So I think that the, your, your physical visit to a museum is a different thing than your visit to a cultural education site of a museum. And uh, while we use some uh, uh, some very sophisticated digital technology within the museum visit still, I think the object, and I think that uh, it's not countering what you have done, but I think that the, the object obviously is in the middle of it and the interaction of you as a visitor with the object and with your other visitors. That's different to uh, our goals and our uh, kind of what we will do on, a, on various digital uh, platforms. And there we will venture in, the, uh, and we are doing that already, into very different uh, grounds. But yeah, as we all know, for example, uh, a moving image um, clip even is extremely suggestive and persuasive. So if you put that next to a Titian, for example, or a Rembrandt, the audience will be completely focused on that, and while we will kind of, we will still channel that uh, that energy of perception uh, to our original objects within the physical experience of the museum, uh, and we will, but we will offer very different things uh, on a different platform in the digital arena. You offer it, you offer digital devices as a trigger. Mm -hmm. So may I mention an upcoming show about um, French paintings about mm. uh, Montmartre, mm. Esprit Montmartre is the title of the show. So you show extremely seldom Toulouse Lautrec, Van Gogh, Boucher, excellent paintings. And you produce a movie, a film in Paris to see the studio of Toulouse Lautrec, Lautrec to see the shows, to see where he worked, where he partied. And you put it on the website, so one should see it, or one can see it, and then go to the show and have the authenticity, authentic pictures, so what Walter yeah. Benjamin called the aura. Well, that's one thing, but for example, we connected also the physical visit to some of our digital initiatives. So if we, for example, know that you, through online ticketing, we know you're coming in four weeks, and we know, okay, you're coming uh, while we have this and that show up, we would send you an, uh, like an online course beforehand saying, okay, you might have a more sophisticated experience visiting the museum if you look at this educational course on your train ride to the museum, so it, kind of preventing you to have to read all these wall texts, but you come already with a very uh, sophisticated, educated background. So you can connect the physical experience as well as, our, as what, what we have on, uh, on, on supply in, the, in some of these digital uh, tools. I think that what, what is also important to mention is that uh, all of our initiatives, uh, be it within uh, digital art publishing, online courses, children's education, gaming, uh, we will all do that for free, um, meaning that it's our business principle is basically that we get a lot more money actually from fo foundations by remaining non-for-profit rather than trying to uh, use the end uh, customer to, uh, to actually uh, subsidize that. Uh, on the other hand, we are venturing into more commercial uh, projects in the digital uh, field Part of it has to do with arts publishing, digital, digital arts publishing. Just think about the whole idea of catalog raisonnés, Werkverzeichnisse, um, that continuously update themselves. Like, let's say, Gerhard Richter paintings. I mean, he still paints. So uh, the catalog raisonné uh, from 1999 uh, is already uh, out of date uh, in a year. So kind of uh, digital publishing gives you a very different kind of aspect uh, on that. Uh, and we have a, we have a right, right now we have formed a collaboration with DM and uh, the Drogerie Märkte here and CV about print on demand, uh, uh, Germany wide on, on certain uh, curated, narrated uh, pictures, uh, I mean picture stories that you can print out as posters, as images, etc. So it, in this case, we are providing, let's say, a, a curated content to a commercial provider, and we share the profits. So it's content and commerce in a way, but on a philanthropic way, because you show art, you don't sell it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Alt, wouldn't it be an opportunity to maybe to stroll through several museums with that Mitayo augmented reality, or to see Toulouse-Lautrec's studio in a Google Glass while seeing his picture? 
Definitely true, and I think we're showing it here. A first implementation always shows how you can enrich your environment with augmented reality. The broader picture is that we are teaching mobile devices to see the environment. And why are we doing this? As technologists, and also when we founded the business, the idea is to create context. Create context for the user in its digital life. And the museum example is actually a very good example for that. You are in a real environment and you're using augmented reality and your mobile device to get additional content. You're not replacing the real world, you're getting additional content superimposed. And to follow up with what you said, I also believe that building virtual representations of museums doesn't do the trick at all. It is about the real experience inside the museum. And then, especially for digital natives, to have their personal primary device enrich the experience in the real environment. And we are seeing that in the augmented reality space quite a bit. Today we are enriching everything from magazines, also the Focus magazine, for example, to digital catalogs, to manuals, where we always say that the user in his real environment is the primary focus and we are only enriching it with the right digital information at the right time. And what I can say is that obviously, especially at the Bayerische Nationalmuseum, that's can be extremely successful because especially within sculpture, uh, usually what we display there, uh, or what is on display is only a fragment of the initial artistic concept. So usually one sculpture was initially actually one part of an overall artistic concept within a church or, or, or an altarpiece. And through that tool, uh, or that device, you can actually give the visitor the experience of the, of the proper context as you mentioned it. And I think that's a very good uh, yeah. approach. It's true, it's not only digital content like video, videos or Twitter feeds or whatever, it's also potentially the original context the art piece was built in. So it's old values, seeing in a new way with new tools. Sophia, was, what triggers you in the museum, in the V&A, which is quite a Moby Dick comparison to the Frankfurt Museum's the nice dolphins? Yes, yeah, so my kind of brief for the museum is to look at the British galleries there, which is British art and design from 1500 to 1900. And I've paid particular attention to the works of William Morris. William Morris, the founder of the arts and crafts movement. Yes. The wallpaper of him become a man tremendous in fashion right now, again, with its patterns. Yes, I didn't realize that, but there's in the V&A shop at the moment, there's so much uh, arts and craft movement patterns on scarves and tea cozies and everything. So it's quite nice that I've picked something that is quite in fashion at the moment. I, you offer also for the public events, so you're not only an artist, you offer for the public. And I saw on your blog, you have a very good website, so I'm sorry we cannot show it here, but please click it on. Y you offer drawing courses, you offered once a drawing courses, very traditional kind of producing art. Yes, well, um, I went to art school and something that we always did was life drawing. And so we held a a day-long workshop where we, the participants did life drawing, but with the kind of character design for games in mind. So they would draw a hero and then a villain and then their own characters. And I was playing a game music at the time to get them in the mood for developing these different characters while practicing an artistic skill as well. Do you, do you, how, how does it come to see the first, the first day you visited the V&A Museum? Did you first go to the website or by person? Oh, by person. I don't think that, although the v &A has a fantastic website where you can search the collections and see all of the different objects, being there in person is obviously so much better and you can get up and close to different things and it, it's very inspiring. So it's a lot of, in the museum field, gamification is a new big word. So to really bring the masses in the museum or bring the younger generation into the museum. And there on the other side, there's a very conservative sex and a traditional sex and to say, no, please, we would like to have one place where we can enjoy art calm. No devices, nothing. So 
How do you enjoy art? Well, even though I work in digital, I do see the like the allure of going to a place and just looking at things without all these different screens and games there. But I think for children especially, games can be very engaging and they can inspire them to think more about what's in the museum. But I think it's important to say with, with the V&A, it's not just about gamification um, and using games for learning, but they're actually looking at games as a form of design, looking at games culture. So in the future there will be, uh, there'll be lots of exhibitions and workshops which are just about games culture and how games are made as well. Mr. Holland, would you have a job for her? Well, we certainly have jobs for, for that. I think that especially uh, online um, gaming is uh, for us a very big topic. Um, I think if you look at it, uh, children right now, uh, to educate them in spatial thinking, color theory, a lot of these uh, things, let's say two decades ago, might have happened in the school or in the family, and now there's, there's no one there yet, uh, anymore that does that job. So I think we are looking uh, for, to educate actually a new audience in the kind of the main areas of kind of, kind of just aesthetic thinking, uh, initial ideas about uh, physical understanding of, 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 uh, of the space, uh, of color theory. And in that context, uh, games uh, can be very persuasive and, and successful. And it's not so much that we use it within the museum, but it's part of a, an experience that the next generation should have to understand the art of the past, of today, and of the future. So since we are running out of time, thank you very much. If there are any questions, we are all here about. And please go to the museums in person. I can really recommend it. Thank you.